All right, so welcome to Brightcast. This is a special Rainbow Bright Day vlog edition. <laughs> and we are your hosts. I am Renee of RainbowBright.co. And I am Katie Carty Hiley of RainbowBright.net. We're in person. Yeah, this is so cool. I can touch you. <laughs> Which may not be a good thing. <laughs> This is technically our pre-Rainbow Day vlog, because tomorrow is actually Rainbow Bright Day, but we had such a rainbow-tastic day that we kind of get two. Yeah. We're in special because of fun today. Let me just tell you, our minds are blown. So how should we go into this? Chronologically? Let's try that, because... I'm sure we're going to be skipping around all over the place anyway, because mm -hmm. our brains are going to be like, oh, but then you, do you remember when they said this later, and then we saw this then, and then, so maybe we should try. And we did that one thing twice, so. We did. <laughs> so, let you in on what we're talking about. Today, we were invited to <laughs> that place where she was made, okay. Okay. We were invited to Hallmark headquarters today to have a bit of a tour and meet some of the people who are currently working on Rainbow Bright. And it was the most amazing experience probably of my life. Other than like my wedding, you know, I'm sorry, honey, I wasn't talking about that. But you know what I mean? Like this is one of those go down in history as one of your best days ever kind of days. So we're going to have, uh, what, is, what is it Facebook has, where it's um, a life, no. Life event? Not a life event. Milestone, though. Mm. I don't remember. It was one of those. Yeah. Whatever that is. Where it's where it's a specific event, like, you know, someone say, ooh, I bought a house, or ooh, I got married. Yes. Or, we are in... The birthplace of Rainbow Bright. Yes. We are in Kansas City, Missouri, where the Rainbow Bright character was thought of, created, registered. This is her birthplace of any places. And uh, we were very fortunate to uh, be invited to meet the people who created her and people who are still creating her today. So they uh, invited us to come down, um, to the headquarters, is that what you call it? Yeah. Yep. To, uh, take a look at where Rainbow Bright started and get an idea of where she's going. Now, we won't let you know too much because a lot of this will be covered at the main event tomorrow, but our experience today was life-altering. Literally. I, I've already said it twice today. I'm going to go ahead and say it one more time. <laughs> And I'm, I'm pretty sure you'll agree that when we first loved Rainbow, we didn't really realize that we would be here today. Or ever. Ever. <laughs> yeah. I mean, how many fans that love a property get to say hello to the people that made their favorite characters and are still making them? And they actually want to hear what we have to say. Yeah. And they care about the property and they care about the characters. They care about the world. That was one of my big takeaways from today was these are not just business people looking to make a buck. Like they are doing their research. They are actually putting a lot of thought and energy into this stuff and a lot of their talent, which they have a ton of. Mm -hmm. And they get it. They are super excited to meet people like us and like you guys who are so enthusiastic about the property um, and about what they have done and are doing. And they 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 like us. <laughs> they like Rainbow Bright fans. So that's not just me and Renee. They, they like all of us. So thank you to everyone watching this because clearly you're a big enough fan that you care um, about what's going on in Rainbow Land as well. And we are very fortunate to bring you this news as a liaison between Rainbow Land and yeah. you. We get to be Brian. <laughs> I'll be the dog. I'm Sam. <laughs> <laughs> so we, well, actually, no, you're the rainbow one, because look, 
Well, that's true. I walked into a rainbow and I came out with rainbow <sighs> hair. So you have to be the dog. Sorry. I got the... <laughs> Can you tell it's a little late and we're tired right now? <laughs> Alright, here's a special news here. I've been up for over 24 hours. This girl's crazy. Hardcore. <laughs> I was too excited to sleep. Which is adorable. I love that about you. <laughs> I slept with the help of some sleeping pills, because otherwise I wasn't going to get much sleep either. But I have a hard time sleeping as it is, and that's a whole other story. But anyway, I, I tried to sleep as much as I could so I would be awake. I had my cup of tea this morning before I went in, so I was a little bit caffeinated so I could try to mentally keep up with everything that was going on, and I'm still reeling with all this information that I've probably forgotten half of already and thank the lord that Renee is here because her memory is infallible and she will be able to fill in all the gaps that I've forgotten. So let, let's get to the main meat of this. We arrive yes. at Hallmark. Uh, we were taken to the the, the archives first, right? Well, first we were given a brief tour around the different yes, departments. You're right. Uh, See, I'm forgetting already. <laughs> where they develop different uh, themes and uh, different other brands other than Rainbow. But the development of these other things could benefit Rainbow in the future. Um, and we saw something cool while we were walking through cubicles, which was the prototype of the Biggie, no, not the Biggie, but Jumbo, there's the word, the Jumbo Rainbow Bright Itty Bitty, the mm -hmm. huge one that's like three feet tall, um, and you can tell it's a prototype because there are some slight differences. She has a frilly skirt that's actually not connected to her body, it comes out a little bit, and I couldn't tell this from the photo I had seen of her, but at the very bottom, um, like where her shoes would be, the yellow part of her shoes, it's actually like textured, like little lines. Um, so we actually got to hold it and get a picture with it, which was so cool. <laughs> very, very cool. <laughs> that was just the first of many amazing things mm -hmm. that were in store for us. So other than looking around the departments, I, I'm trying to figure what happened next other than the archive. Yeah. Um, that was Hallmark is thought. developing their own archive or vault or however you want to call it of all of their properties, but specifically they showed us Rainbow, and we got to see some early development photos. Some of these you've already seen on Facebook, uh, which is facebook.com forward slash Rainbow Bright. Mm -hmm. If you want to go there, look through their archive pictures. You totally should. They have some wonderful pre-Rainbow Bright stuff. Um, yeah, like some concept images when they were first coming up with the characters, mm -hmm. back when it was an all-female cast before they had made some changes and included some male characters as well. And even then there were some variations. They'd have like two versions of particular characters. And some of these we had not seen on their mm -hmm. Facebook page. And I was like, wait, wait, that's, oh my God. And that's, oh my God. And there was a lot of squeeing going on. We'll just say that. <laughs> One thing we, we can uh, tell you is we actually got to look at some old catalogs mm -hmm. uh, from merchandise that was sold back in the 1980s. Now, being in these catalogs, these were items that were produced from uh, birthday party decor to stickers, uh, sticker books. Yeah. Um, it was a lot of party stuff. Lots of party stuff. But you're right. Stickers, sticker books. Nothing from Mattel there. in this, by the way. Right. Nothing from Mattel. This was all straight things that they produced. Puzzles, remember we discussed they had uh, some puzzles that they did? One puzzle. One. That was an interesting bit of trivia. So they bought, I don't know if they told us what year they bought the company, Springbok, Spring B O K, is a company that at least used to make puzzles. And they pulled out at one point a Rose Petal Place puzzle, because mm -hmm. that's another one of their properties is Rose Petal Place, also from the 80s, also adorable, not as cool as Rainbow Bright, but awesome. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, they, they had this thing that was still in the shrink wrap and everything. And they're like, oh yeah, this is one that we produced. And I'm like, wait a minute. There are like 10,000 Rainbow Bright puzzles and you didn't produce those. <laughs> they're like, oh, but we did produce one. And I was like, oh, really? 
So I had to go and look on my website and find it because I didn't know which one it was because there is one. If you go to my site, rainbowbright.net, in the little Google search bar, type in Springbok and it'll bring you right to the puzzle that they manufactured themselves in the 80s because the rest were made by other companies. Uh, in America, mostly by Golden. Uh, in other countries, they had different producers depending on where you were. Yeah. Uh, but other things we got to look at were... Um, so much stuff. Lots of Star Stealer uh, stuff. Lots of pre 90s concepts. Oh my god, that part was so cool. So, well, it wasn't pre 90s, it was early 90s. Okay. So, okay, you guys know about the stuff that came out around 97. Up, up, and away. Color Crew with mm -hmm. Indigo and Amber and Cerise. Those guys. Sparkle Bright. That one. Yeah. Before that, Another company. Did we ever find out the name of the company? No, but we did find out that eventually Hallmark absorbed them. Yes, that is correct. So it doesn't really matter who the company was, I suppose, at this point. There was another company who had an idea to bring Rainbow Bright back in the early 90s, and they did a pretty decent amount of sketches, uh, some updated looks for them, although they were a good bit older. They were more like teenage mm -hmm. Rainbow Bright characters. But they looked really cool. Um, I actually liked the artwork a lot. I don't think I would have necessarily wanted dolls in that style or a, a cartoon or anything because, like I said, it was just too old for the characters in my mind. But they were beautiful and it was something we had never even heard of, much less seen before. So that was mind-blowing. <laughs> I'm still trying to wrap my head around like, wait, there was an iteration of Rainbow Bright that we've never heard of. <laughs> Not that they ever manufactured it or did anything with it, but just that it exists. And there was another one where it was very Disney. Where they, again, they were mm -hmm. attempting to make her older and the animation profiles and everything looked very 90s Disney. Mm -hmm. um, I'm actually kind of glad they didn't go that route um, because again, I agree, Rainbow Bright is timeless. I don't want her aging. I don't want her you know, becoming older or even being replaced by somebody else. Mm -hmm. I mean, our rainbow is our rainbow. Yeah. And, you know, we as fans and the rest of the fandom have proven that several times now. Yeah. We like the original. We do. She's perfect the way she is right yeah. here. That's what perfection. <laughs> now, in addition to seeing the archives, we actually took a break and they showed us a few things that we're not going to go into too much detail today because that's the main event tomorrow. But they gave us a few teasers mm -hmm. of some different products that they're looking forward to uh, releasing to everyone. And they showed us uh, a few things that they have already worked on this past year. Mm -hmm. You know, there's stuff from Truffle Shuffle. Yeah. Um, a lot of stuff I had actually seen in person before. Mm -hmm. But it was nice, and they gave us a very nice welcome of uh, shaking our hands, greeting us by name. And These people are so nice. Like, so nice. I wish I could just, like, hang out with them for hours on end. <laughs> and we, we would love to assist them, continue to assist them uh, with being uh, ambassadors to Rainbow Land to you. Yeah. Uh, so... We hope that they you will guys to us. give us ideas too. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, obviously we come up with our own ideas because we live Rainbow Bright constantly. But there have been so many times when fans have come to me and have, you know, have you ever thought of this or this theory or whatever? And I'm like, whoa, mind blown. No, I haven't. That's pretty cool. So please keep them coming and we will absolutely pass on your ideas and your thoughts as or long as we can. continue to make your voice vocal using social media. Mm -hmm. Um, we did learn a lovely tidbit, which I don't know if we should mention the whole feeling thing. I think we can. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Phelan, um, has now basically given Rainbow Bright back to Hallmark. Yes. While they are a subsidiary of Hallmark, they aren't Hallmark. So Hallmark actually has the brand. So they have the Facebook page, uh, Instagram and all that. So let them know via social media that... Of what your ideas are when they ask a question what do you think of this character or what kind of character would you do for this you know give them those little color crystals and you know you see we'll see what happens see what kind of star sprinkles they turn into ah! 
Because some of you guys out there have very deep imaginations. Absolutely. And they can go way beyond what we can think of. Especially as brain frazzled as we are right now. <laughs> Just, Just a little bit. Just a little bit. But yeah, um, so the feel-in show is not going to be going forward. I know some of you are going to be really disappointed by that news. Um, you know, we were very supportive of the show when it first came out. We're really excited about the potential it had. But then, you know, time kept going by and nothing else was happening. So the interest started dropping off and then we got kind of discouraged because we thought, well, if they haven't done anything by now, they're probably not going to. But we were still up in the air. Now we can at least put to rest that, no, they will not be continuing with the Feelin series. It will just be that self-contained three-part miniseries available on Feelin.com. I assume it will still be available to watch. I don't think they're taking it off of the website. But it's not something they're going to be continuing on or focusing on. So the RainbowBright.com website will be changing soon to focus on what Hallmark is doing with the brand as opposed to the show. So I'm actually really excited to see what their new website's going to look like. I'm excited to see that. Uh, we do not know, however, since Feelin is no longer going to be continuing the series, whether it will be made public. Right now, you still have to have a subscription to Feelin to see the content. Um... We will be doing our own reviews. Yeah. I think, you know, on Brightcast, we held back a little bit of some of the information because it was still a paid service that we didn't want to step on toes. We'll just, we'll put it that way. Um, so we didn't want to give away the ending or give away spoilers, that kind of thing. So we were trying to just talk about it in a kind of a surface way. Um, and when we talk about it, we'll still say, you know, spoiler alert, if you want to watch the episode before you listen to us talk about it, please do. We'll give you a heads up. But I think at this time, we are free to talk a little bit more in depth about what we thought about the, the episodes and the characters um, and what they did do with it and what we think they could have done with it. So maybe we can even talk to some people who worked on it. Um, I know the writer, Rachel Vine, had a lot of other ideas in her head when it ended, uh, maybe she'd like to talk about them if she's free to. I don't know. Um, but we'll do what we can to at least get some more info if some of you are interested. But I'm, yeah, I'm excited to kind of revisit it and just finally give it a good talk over and then we can come back to the present and focus on all the awesome stuff that's happening to Rainbow Right uh -huh. right now because it's so much. <laughs> I do want to go ahead and express, even though we did squee about it and laugh about it and everything today, uh, to Hallmark, thank you very, very much for this opportunity um, and for giving our voices a little more rainbow power. <laughs> totally. We had so much fun. Like, I know we probably said this 50 times mm -hmm. while we were there, but literally... We could not believe we were where we were doing what we were doing. Like, I was constantly like, pinch me. I yeah. don't think I'm awake. You're sitting I, here I'm touching dreaming. things <laughs> that, your hands. that no one's touched in, in like so many years. And yeah. things that fans haven't seen before we got yeah. to see. Now, unfortunately, this doesn't mean that we can show you everything that we saw. Right. We were not allowed to take pictures of a lot of the, especially the archive mm -hmm. stuff. Um, but we can at least mention a couple of things that we saw, which mm -hmm. were super cool. Which one do you want to relay first? Uh, you go first. Okay. So you may have seen a picture, and if not, we can pull it back up. Um, before the Dark Princess, there was another... I had to talk about this because it's so crazy. Yep. Um, there was another design. The Dark Princess is actually the second version of what they had in mind for that character. And the first version was this really old crone, like super scary, haggard. Yeah, like a hag. A hag, yeah. yeah. Um, and we had seen a picture of that previously from Kenneth Mogan, who had gotten um, an image of that out of the archives and done a redrawing of it. But what I don't believe was included in his image that we saw at the very bottom of the page on one of the versions was her name. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to get it wrong again. <laughs> Empress. Ha ha. What was the word? I want to say hyena. That's not it. <laughs> Empress. What was it? 
It's, it starts with an H. Hysteric, hyster, hysteria. Hysteria. There we go. Thank you, Dustin. We got some, <laughs> <laughs> got some confirmation over here that our brains are working on. Empress Hysteria. Mm -hmm. What an awesome name is that? <laughs> so that was the, the first thing that we came across that was just like, wait, she had a name? That's fantastic. So, okay. We also saw other variations of other characters, um, like Count Blog, as we know him, was... Uh, Colonel Blog? Colonel Blog? Yeah. He was and he was a little Blog. short, yes. stubby little guy. Yeah, there were like two or three versions of him before the final. Um, and uh, we got to see the... Uh, well, you know how when you have the press kits, you have the images of the individual characters? Not just scenes that they were in, but of the, of the character isolated by themselves. So mm -hmm. in the Star Stealer press kit, you have Chris. But we also got to see oh, Orin. Yeah. He was so cute! <laughs> and we got to see individual characters for uh, uh, Sergeant Zombo. Yes. There were some scary ones, too. Like, they'll do some just their face, and there's mm -hmm. all this really dark shading. Like, Oh, and we found out that apparently the prison planet is a moon that... Yes. Uh, orbits the princess's planet, but the princess's planet was never actually named. Yes. But now we know at least it's a separate planet. Because mm -hmm. before we weren't even sure. It could have been on the other side of the planet that Rainbow Land is on for all we knew. Mm -hmm. But now we have verification that it's a completely separate planet and the prison planet is a moon that orbits it. And that was so cool. <laughs> uh, we also was able to confirm from the comic books how the Spectrum sprites all have moons. The earlier uh, versions of Orin and the Spectrum sprites did have moons on their antenna rather than yep. orbs. Uh, so we were able to confirm that. Mm -hmm. And uh, we saw... I feel like there was another... It was, it Zomb was it Zombo or Blog that had another version? I remember um, Blog was very sinister. He almost seemed like a wizard, though I never saw him do any magic in the movie. Right. So they hinted that he was a wizard in the uh, Queen episode, Queen of the Sprites. Yes. Faker. <laughs> I turned this sprite into a frog. No, you didn't. <laughs> Liar. Um, uh, we did see lots of uh, the earlier developments of Twink. There were so many. They were all... Oh my god! All the Twinks. Like, I know Twink is your favorite character, yes. but he's he's rising on my list because he, oh my god, it doesn't matter how they draw him, he is amazingly adorable every time. And some of them were actually a little bit cuter to me than the final, well, not on that one sheet that had like the final in the middle mm -hmm. and the variations around the sides. Those were really interesting, but I like the one they chose the best. But then in some of the other iterations, one of them I think was actually from that 90s, the yes, early 90s, was. where they had these curly Q antenna. Mm -hmm. And little bitty noses, and the noses yes. weren't red. They were the color of the sprite, but they were very small and cute. Yeah, they were really, really adorable. Mm -hmm. So there have been several iterations of the sprites, and Twink specifically. We got to see some uh, earlier designs for toys that they were thinking about doing. Mm -hmm. um, Lots of different ideas for the different kinds of color castles. Yep. Um, uh, we got to see some earlier designs of Tickle Pink. Oh my god, you guys. I was not expecting this. So, it was this was a line drawing. Mm -hmm. An original line drawing. As far as I could tell. Maybe it was a photocopy, but whatever. Line drawing of Tickle Pink. Now, it's the stance that we've seen her in many times, where she's kind of up with the butterfly. Okay. What was different was that she had a very prominent tulip on her cheek this time. Not only that, on her belt in the middle, where the star would normally be, was a round emblem with a tulip on it. And her stars on her bows were tulips. She was like the tulip queen! It was amazing! So we can now confirm from the Star Stealer film, where the tulip cheek yes. of tickled pink came from. Exactly. 
whether or not it's temporary or not, we're still not sure. But that's okay. Mm -hmm. I just love that that was a concept at one time that I guess they decided to go to not go with because it would have been different than all the rest of the dolls. Maybe. Well, from the earlier concepts, it does look like they were going towards a cheek emblem for all the characters originally. Because remember, uh, Blue Moon had a moon on her cheek. Yeah. Uh, Scarlet had the music note on her cheek. Right. Um, but they moved away from that, and I liked that. Because it does make Rainbow still the only one that has the cheek star. Yeah. Um, even though we did see, we did see a color version of Chris where he does have a star on his cheek. Yes. And it's blue. Yep. Although it could be argued that the blue star is on the actual like clear plastic that goes across his eyes. But we don't think so. We think yeah. it's actually on his cheek. <laughs> um, which that comes from an earlier concept of him being a cousin to Rainbow, which could be that it's a, a birthmark shared among special kids like her, but... But we know she earned her star. She saved Rainbow Land! Speaking of, we now know the origin of her name, the name Wisp. Earlier concepts... Oh yeah! See, I'm forgetting already! <laughs> early concepts of Rainbow Bright was a woodland wisp or a like almost like a forest spirit um that's the little image that you'll find on uh kenneth mogan's article mm -hmm. uh that had the the little wispy uh pink dress with little star emblem up here her character name was wisp she was a total hippie she was a total hippie i love that so much not that rainbow bright's not a hippie i mean she brings color and life to the world She's a hippie. But this is even like more hippie, like tree hugging, flowers in her hair, probably like, oh my god, woodland wisp that just, that kills me. I love it so much. Especially since I have a cat named Wisp after her. I'm like, yeah, I could, I could see that. Well, <laughs> it seems like the earlier concepts were going more of a nature route before they went to a color route. Yeah. Uh, though, you know, color and nature do come hand in hand. I mean, mm -hmm. you have colors that will affect your mood. You have colors that can affect... Um, to me, I feel, I also believe that color affects flavor. Are you one of those that can eat an M&M without looking at it and know what color it is? No. <laughs> me neither. I can eat a Skittle. <laughs> those are a little more obvious. <laughs> What else did we see in that room? Oh my gosh, there was so much. And there were all these sketches of Chris, like in different stances, mm -hmm. like with or without his helmet. And the white I've onyx. Seen before. The what? Yeah, okay, explain. In one of the prototype images of Chris from Star Stealer, and they have had this image on the Facebook page, you see a profile shot of Chris on a black onyx, and in the corner, a white onyx. That was one of his concepts, whether or not to make him black or to make him white. I always thought that was just a little sketch up in the corner <laughs> that they had just not filled in. I didn't realize that was actually a different colored onyx. But it was! It Wait, makes we it came up with a good name for it. What was it? Oh, that's right. We were just going to use Crystal like they were originally yeah. going to name Chris. That would have been kind of awesome. Yeah, Chris Tall was Chris's... Uh, prototype name before he just went by Chris. So there was so much info you guys. I wish we could have just videoed and pictured and all the things, all the things. But these are archive material very mm -hmm. sensitive that they're understandably secretive about. Um but they are releasing them, you know, on their Facebook page from time to time. Um, we can thank Peter for that. Apparently he's been the one di diving into the archives and finding these things to share with us. So thank you, Peter Martin. You are amazing. <laughs> we had to spend a lot of time with him today and he is a wealth of information. Mm -hmm. This guy knows what he's talking about. He has been doing his research and I feel like the brand is in really good hands right now. I mean, it's definitely very comforting when... Two people such as us can actually sit and have a conversation about a property 
and they get it and we get it. Yes. We get what they're saying. They'll say, oh, well, then this happens. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. You know, versus Starlight wouldn't do that or that wouldn't happen or where is that place? Because that's not on the map. <laughs> <laughs> that's like saying in the middle of Rainbow Land is a chocolate gooey center. Has nothing to do with candy, no. but no, you you wouldn't no. do that. <laughs> Not Willy Wonka Land. Yeah. It's Rainbow Land. Yeah. <laughs> uh, tomorrow, Hallmark is going to be filming their own uh, recording of tomorrow's event uh, for their own archives. I uh, heard there's also going to be some news reporters there from local here in Kansas City. Um, I'm not sure how many fans are going to be there. I hope there will be a bunch. We want to meet you guys. We look forward to meeting you. But tomorrow is all about Hallmark. It's all about uh, sharing Rainbow Bright with the community here in Kansas City. Yep. Where she was born. Yes. In her womb. <laughs> I feel like the old city is the conception site of Rainbow Bright. I really wanted to go. You're giving me a weird look right now. I wanted to go. I was thinking of going, don't put procreation in with my childhood. I it you creeps me out. That. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> no, when I was booking my trip, I actually looked to see if World of Fun was open during the week. Because yesterday I had some free time. And I was like, oh, maybe I have to go to World of Fun. Even though I know the stage show for Rainbow Bright hasn't been there for decades. But I just wanted to go there and be in that spot and be like, this is where she used to do her little play. But it's only open during the weekends now that school's back in. Failure. Wait a minute. If it's only available on the weekends and our event tomorrow is only good until 1, then we're doing like dinner and oh, yeah. stuff. We're still figuring tomorrow yeah. out. Yeah. And eventually, one of these days, we're going to be doing San Diego. You know this, right? San Diego Zoo Adventure Recreation? Go! Yeah. One day. What did you do that? I don't know. Yeah! <laughs> this bump. <laughs> Sorry, I'm wearing a ring. Oh, that didn't hurt. <laughs> I got my little onyx with me today. Oh. Um. Oh my god, I feel like I'm forgetting so many things already. What am I forgetting? I don't know. Mm. Overall, you can expect a lot of information to be coming out of us as... You know, we, again, mentally digest everything that's happened. Our uh, brains are on overload <laughs> in it, the it, best way possible. <laughs> expect uh, vlogs, expect blogs, expect, you know, little snippets here and there of things that we'll remember. Yep. And uh, pictures. Just stay tuned to Brightcast and yeah. check out Facebook.com forward slash Rainbow Bright if you have not already. Yes. To tune Follow in tomorrow. them. Star them. There's like a thing you can do. I forget exactly what it's called now. But you like click the button and you tell it to like notify you. Oh like, yeah. First make post. It pop. First mm -hmm. post. That's it. So anytime they post something, it comes up right at the top. So mm -hmm. you won't miss it. So do that to their page and do it to our pages too while you're at it. Just, just saying. <laughs> But you should absolutely do it to their page because yes. that's where all the official info is going to be coming out of from now on, especially now that they have full control over it instead of feeling. So I think good things are coming down the line. We should probably also notify that the name for uh, some of the Rainbow Bright social medias will be changing. Yeah. It will, they're, it's not going to be Bright is Back anymore, but they have not yet decided on what the name will be. So again, stay tuned to uh, their official Facebook page, website, uh, or even us. As soon as we hear something new, we'll let you know. Yep. Because we have to know all the things. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited. Because you guys, it's not over. That's, like, some things, you know, they, they bring it back for a limited time and then it's gone again. But... She's sticking around for a while. Like, it's not like this is just a one year and over type thing with, with Rainbow. They still have plans for at least the next year, it sounded well, like. If you look at Rainbow Bright and all of the different iterations of her, usually you have like one every 10 years. Mm -hmm. The past 10 years, you got three. Yeah, but we none have, of them lasted very long. Well, we ha currently have, the first one was the 2008, 2009, and then we have the feeling. 
and then now they're going back to the original. Mm -hmm. They have a mature audience. They also have um, a new generation of children to introduce to our kids. Exactly. They love her. Buy your kids the dolls and books and stuff because they really are awesome. And <laughs> things are getting better. Mm -hmm. uh, so if there are some things about the current new items that you aren't so thrilled with, they are getting better. It takes practice. Yeah, absolutely. And some differences you'll see between one doll and the next, it's just cost-cutting measures to make things... Because it has to be profitable, or what's the point? Um, so, <laughs> clearly, there's there's a profit margin that they have to be conscious of. So if some of the things change, like the Shy Violet not having the embroidery on her itty-bitty, it's not a big deal. We will live. Um, <laughs> I'm just glad we got her. And hopefully that means we will get the other color kids and the sprite that we're still missing, and some other characters in itty-bitty form. I would be all for that. I'm looking forward to it. Did you say ornaments, plural? Shh. I don't think we're supposed to hear that. No, what did she say? She just said T. There was no S at the end of that. Oh, yeah. Grace. Mm -mm. So tomorrow, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, how much trouble are we going to be getting in? <laughs> we can cut that out okay, if you really want to. <laughs> I'm excited. Okay. So tomorrow we are going to be up bright and, well, hopefully not too early because I need my sleep. But we're so going to be up and we're going to be putting on some rainbows and we're going to be at the Hallmark store in Crown Center at least at 11 if not before. It's us. We'll probably be there a little early just because it's us. Mm -hmm. Oh, we can't wait. We're too excited. Like, we would go camp out right now if it would make a difference, but there's no need to do that. And I wouldn't sleep on the street in the rain. So we're not going to do that. But we're going to be there tomorrow, and I hope you're going to be there tomorrow. And if you can't be there tomorrow, I hope you will be tuning in to the live stream tomorrow and give me a virtual wave and give Renee a virtual wave. <laughs> Just <laughs> and even if we're not like responding while it's happening, because we're probably going to be just kind of in the moment, mm -hmm. paying attention to what's going on um, and watching the video again later, we will respond when it is. We are going to do the, the cutout picture, though. We've already agreed to do that. <laughs> we're so it's doing that. No. They made a car. Well, I don't even know if it's cardboard. I would. It's I don't a know. cutout, you know, like they have at carnivals where you fed the head. Through, like, instead of it being a strong man, it's Red Butler. Red Butler. Rainbow Bright's in the middle, although she has a face. So uh -huh. it can't be her. No. But then there's Patio Green. So I'm going to be Red Butler, and she's going to be a Patio Green. Yep. And then we might just switch it and do both. Sure, you know, why not? We're just... And then I'm just going to, like, sit in front of Rainbow Bright, because I'm going to be wearing her costume anyway. <laughs> but she can wear the costume. I'm going to be wearing the makeup. And the wig. So yeah. together we'll make a full costume. Yes! With our powers combined. <laughs> we are Rainbow Bright! <laughs> We're also ridiculous. We realize it. And sleep deprived. A little bit. And exhausted. Yeah, but it's... it's mm. Oh, it's late. Oh, yeah. Well, My watch is still on Eastern time. <laughs> It makes it even worse. <laughs> so we might wrap up right now since mm -hmm. I can't remember anything right off the, uh, at the moment. But when we remember other stuff that we forgot to say this time, we'll write it down and we'll, we'll say it next time or in our next broadcast episode or something. Because we want to relay as much info to you guys as we can because it was so much fun today. I still can't even, even. And we still didn't tell them everything. You're gonna freak out. You're gonna freak out when you see the stuff. And we don't even know all the stuff. Like they're oh, yeah. doing another announcement tomorrow. I have no idea what that's about. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna. Oh my god. I'm gonna be so excited. Whatever it is. I'm sure. Just because it's it's them and they they know what we like and what we want. I'm so stoked with this team that's currently working on the brand because they get it and they're listening. Like they pay attention. When we make comments, and <gasps> we got to meet Kara Good today. We did. We got to meet the voice of Rainbow Bright, and I can clear up the question. Yes. Okay. 
Because in my last review video, or whatever video, no, that was my freak out video, right? The Rainbow Bright Day is Coming freak out video. I was saying how I was comparing the swipe book to the new book with the figurine, which both have voices of Rainbow Bright, and I was saying how they sounded different, but we only had one name as the new voice of Rainbow Bright, and I was like, well, surely it's not the same person if they sound so different. It is the same person, and she noticed the difference as well, but she explained the reason that they sound different is the size of the speaker. In the swipe book, it's a much smaller speaker, so it's a higher pitch that comes out. The figurine, actually when it first came back and they did a test on it, it was even lower. Like it sounded like a guy. Yeah, it, 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 it definitely didn't sound like Rainbow Bright. So that, that was actually like the second or third. Yeah, we have Rainbow Guy going on. Rainbow Guy. <laughs> So they made improvements to get it as good as it is. Um, so that was not Kara's fault at all. That's just a limit of technology with the bigger speaker. It just made it lower pitch. Um, so I'm really excited to hear her in person tomorrow because I'm sure it's going to be fantastic. So just wanted to say, sorry, Kara, that was not your fault. I realize that now. And thank you so much for the explanation. Now we all can understand. And if you don't why. understand what she's talking about, check out YouTube. Rainbow Bright Net. Yes. Because I talk a lot. <laughs> Shall we end this talk now? Yes, before I fall asleep in front of everybody's okay. face. Um, well, thank you, everybody, for tuning in to this special Brightcast report, and we will have more for you tomorrow. Definitely. Night. Good night. <laughs>